So, um, according to paleontologists, it's believed that snakes actually arose from monitor lizards, and that's what their closest ancestors are from years ago. And um, pythons used to use their limbs as rudimentary spurs that uh, were used in mating and combat. So the way fossils are dated are actually, there's two methods, there's relative and absolute dating, and those processes are used by either absolute dating, it's almost like if you were to look at a photograph and looking at the things in a photograph, dating it that way, or by uh, relative dating, which is basically using like half-life, like the decay of it, radioactive isotopes, things like that, to date it through a more chemical and biological means. Um, trace fossils are actually not only just the fossils that were by animals, such as like the bones, but like the footprints and other biological activity that are behind, sometimes waste, uh, uh, sometimes the lodgings of animals. Again, not just the bones, the fossils of that. And then finally, um, mammoths, um, yes, mammoths are really helpful to uh, paleontologists and uh, biologists in their studies because they help, they, um, since they're encased in ice, their DNA is preserved, so we can use the DNA to study the genetics of these animals and not only their bone structure, which is really important. Okay, so the, uh, the ancient sea cow is actually very closely related to elephants and dugongs. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. You can see it here by the chart. And also, um, their hind limbs are no longer present in modern day manatees, or sea cows, I'm sorry. And um, that's the only limb change that I've seen noticeable. So why is more better when it comes to fossils? Well, I will tell you. So uh, according to paleontologists, the more fossils you have, the more you study variation within a population. So in the case of a three-toed horse, you can look at different specimens in different regions, the more fossils you have, versus not having enough fossils, you won't be able to see the variety. The giant brown sloth is now clearly extinct, which is the relative of the tree sloth is most closely related to the armadillo, which is still around the today. Birds are really hard to find fossils of because their bones are much more fragile and thin and delicate versus other mammals. So unfortunately, they are much harder to be preserved. So they usually decompose and don't hold up like other mammals' fossils do. So the president who actually mistook a um, a giant sloth claw for a cat claw was actually Thomas Jefferson, the third president of the United States. So, um, we're out here at the Florida Museum of Natural History. It's the end of the day. Uh, it's a little rainy, as you can hear. Um, I think the overall impression, basic summary of the day is that the exhibits inside of the fossil portion of the museum are extremely learning oriented because they use both like the physical element and the like imagery of the fossils to showcase that really loud. To showcase all the information and draw you in and then once you read the actual plaques, you get a lot more knowledge on the source. And I think the way it's set up is, is super intuitive and helps everyone understand, especially young kids. And I know at age 21 that I enjoyed it. So thank you.